Good morning. Um, I realise that lots of you may not have read the beginning part of Claude in the City. So this morning, I'm going to read the first part of the story. Uh, this is a book by Alex T. Smith that we've been reading in class. Um, yeah, so hope you enjoy it. Here we go. This is Claude. Say hello, Claude. Claude is a dog. Claude is a small dog. Claude is a small, plump dog. Claude is a small, plump dog who wears a red beret and a lovely red jumper. There it is, look, his lovely red jumper and his lovely red beret. Looks very proud. Claude lives in a house with Mr and Mrs Shiny Shoes. Here they are now. Also, Claude lives with his best friend, Sir Bobbly Sock. Sir Bobbly Sock is both a sock and quite bobbly. He is grubby and he smells a bit like cheese. Every morning after breakfast, Mr and Mrs Shiny Shoes put on their shiny shoes and their warm coats. Claude watches them from his bed. He watches them with one beady eye open and one eye closed, like this. Can you do that? <laughs> or sometimes, like this. But he's got the other eye closed now. Be a good boy, Claude, says Mr Shiny Shoes. We'll be back soon, says Mrs Sh Shiny Shoes. And off they go to work. As soon as the door has closed behind them, Claude opens both beady eyes. He takes out his beret from underneath his pillow and pops it on his head. Look at him thinking of all the different adventures he might want to go on. Then he decides what adventure he's going to have that day. One morning, Claude put on his beret and decided to go to the city. I think we should go to the city, he said, and he did. Sir Bobbly Sock came too, as he didn't have anything else planned that day. Claude had never been to the city before. He couldn't believe how tall the buildings were. They stretched up right into the air and some of them disappeared into the clouds. Sir Bobbly Sock was glad that it wasn't him who had to clean all the windows. The city was big and bright and very, very busy. There was so much to do. First, Claude and Sir Bobbly Sock went for a walk. They walked down one road and up another. Everybody seemed friendly. They don't all look very friendly to me, look. Cars beeped their horns and some drivers shouted at them, but it was too noisy for Claude to hear anything that they were saying. Sir Bobbly Sock was slightly deaf in one ear, so he was no help at all. Next, they went to look at the pigeons. There were lots of pigeons in the city. Claude looked at them very closely and from every angle. He looked secretly, shyly, as if he was trying not to look at them at all. Claude decided that he liked pigeons very much indeed. There he is. By 11 o'clock, Claude was feeling a little bit thirsty. So he went to a fancy cafe with Sir Bobbly Sock. Claude ordered a large hot chocolate with marshmallows and a straw. Sir Bobbly Sock ordered a big fruity cocktail, which looked more like a plant pot. Claude's drink was delicious and he drank every drop. Sir Bobbly Sock wasn't sure where to start. Look at that big drink. Now it was time to go shopping. Claude was amazed. There were so many different sorts of shops. There were shoe shops, loo shops, chip shops, chop shops, which were really butcher's shops. 
and there were even shops selling the most curious contraptions Claude had ever seen. <laughs> then Sir Bobbly Sock discovered the best shop in the world. Can you guess what it's going to be? Ever. Claude hurried inside and bought a beret in every colour and every pattern. Oh, he does love a beret. That was an awful lot of berets. I'm going to stop the story there because I would like you to have a go at designing your own kind of beret. So here's what I've already had a go at doing. So I drew three different kinds of berets in different colours and different patterns. I even had a go at drawing the mannequin heads uh, that the berets are sat upon. And then I designed my ultimate beret. If I was to wear one, this is definitely the one I would go for. Once you've done, maybe you could send me your berets, your finished masterpieces, and then I'll be able to post them. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and I'll speak to you soon.